Akani Sambine, welcome to the show. How have you been, man? It's it's great. And I just want to say thank you. You're number one. I know you like <laughs> finishing first, but you're number one on the CS2 Plus show. Yeah, thank you for having me first. Thank you for having me on your show and giving me the honor of being first. You know, that's, that's, that's something I, I enjoy. But yeah, great to be here. I mean, I met you 2016, I think, for the first time. Mm. And I was remember with the executive producer of the show, Raymond, we were talking about this guy's just super cool. He's got it <laughs> together. It was before Rio. Um, and our sort of journey following you has just been incredible. I think, you know, we've seen the highs. We've seen the lows. Um, there's been a lot of highs. There has been lows in between. But I think you've come out on top, man. I think you've been mm. consistent. And I think you've always been a clean-cut ambassador for athletics in South Africa and for Africa. Thank you. I think, um, I think since 2016, 2016 was that year that changed me that changed my life in athletics you know um i made olympic final finished first in the final which was very close to actually getting a medal if you look at the 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 the, the photo finish but i think from that year it's been constantly first in the world um and just just being one of the best in the world and for me that's 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 always been a goal you know and the next goal is to finally get onto the podium, you know, and 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 and, and win. Is that? So, I mean, you're a competitive guy. Mm -hmm. Does it get to you? I saw on Instagram the other day. Yeah. Some guy calling you out about some nonsense about yeah he hasn't finished on the podium <laughs> or some nonsense. But you were like, who are you, bro? Like you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you even deal with that sort of stuff? Because social media is a blessing and a curse, man. Mm -hmm. It's very much so. You know, um, I think that day I was just. It just got me on the off day, you know, because normally I would be very composed and I'll see everything and just be like, oh, it doesn't matter, you know. And that day I was just like, you know what, this guy is actually just, let me just give it to him. And he called me out and whatever. And then I was just like, dude, who are you even? Like, you haven't <laughs> done anything in your life. Like, um, I'm busy here running, representing you and the country. And I've been one of the best sprinters in the world. And... That's out of how many billion people that are in the world, and I'm top five in the world. So you can't just come and say that to me, you know. And yeah, I just felt like I needed to defend myself a little bit. But I know my 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 work on the track speaks louder than what I can say. And yeah, I'll always always back what I do on the track. You know, I'm I'm I believe I'm a great sprinter. I believe I'm one of the best sprinters out there. You know, and yeah, it's just just knowing when. To do things, when to say things, and yeah, just not being too active on the socials and not getting into the nitty gritties of it. Is, is it difficult to stay away from it? Because it must be tempting. Like you said, no, you had to put this guy in his place. I mean, two Olympic 100 meter finals, right? Mm -hmm. Commonwealth Games champion mm -hmm. uh, on the CV, African champion on the CV. Uh, there's a couple silvers in there in the mix, but the record, the CV, come on. I mean, does it feel sometimes you're a little bit undervalued because you are representing South Africa? You've got the pro tier on your, on your heart. Mm. You sing the national anthem. Mm. You're out there. Sometimes you feel a little bit undervalued or taken for granted, maybe? Mm. Yes. I can say yes and no. Um, I do feel undervalued, but there are those that support me. There are those that have been with me through this journey and have seen me rise, you know, and, and, and I don't want to take anything away from them, you know. Um, for me, it's always been a thing of, you know, putting my best foot out there, representing myself, representing my family, representing the country, and then representing Africa as a whole. And I believe I've done that to the best. I don't think there's ever been a 100-meter sprinter from Africa to do that, you know, and it's just been me. And it's been me against the world, you know, representing the whole of Africa. And um, I think um, just having to, 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 to kind of separate the private life to social life is something that I've kind of mastered now. And um, I think I'm at a place where I see social media as work. Yeah. And I am at a place where now I keep my private life out of it because that's the one part of life where I have control and I can decide what I want to do there and how I want to be. And with the pro professional life, it's, you know, I have to be an athlete, you know, I have to, sets an example i have to you know be that person 
you know and and and, and for me it's just making sure that those two lives don't mix because i don't i don't like it like that i yeah. just prefer it that way so where do the cool kids go on holiday then? I mean, now we <laughs> now i'm talking about your private life but like you don't have to give it too much away but did you get a break at least mm. did you get some downtime yeah finally um i think this year this year was 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 one year where i decided that i'm actually gonna go away and i went away for a bit and it was really cool uh super cool like Tropical island vibes. No, not even tropical island. <laughs> desert. No, no, to the desert. <laughs> I'm not going to push you on that. But I think it's important, like you said, you're so determined to try and find these, separate Akani the athlete, the sprinter, um, and Akani the father, Akani mm. the, the family man, mm. you know, and sort of finding space for where the two combine is, is a trick. And, and I think... Being someone who has a family, you also have to think about the long-term plan, you know? Like, yeah. also, what example are you setting? What's the legacy like? Yeah, Does yeah. that legacy word sort of float around in your head somewhere? It does, but it doesn't put any pressure on me because at the same time, I, I have to just focus on training. I have to focus on performing. I have to focus on the goals that I want to achieve, you know? And for me, it's very important that I set goals. Mm. It's very important that I work towards those goals. And if, 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 if I'm doing all of those things, the legacy will come. That's the goal for the end, you know, and I need to focus on the journey. I need to focus on the processes to get to that, to get to the legacy that we're trying to build. And in order to get that, you know, you have to tick off the boxes. Mm -hmm. You have to tick off where we're we going and how we're doing this thing and like just the ups and the downs because the downs also paint that story for the legacy. You know, they paint the story for when you rise and when you achieve things, you know, because everything can't be great. Yeah. It can't be, man. You can't grow without downs. You can't, you can't, you know, have life experiences without downs, you know. And, and, and I also want to inspire and I have to be able to inspire with my downs and be able to share my story and be like, you know, I was down, but I built myself up. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, 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 that's where we're at now. I think there's a lot of, a lot of growth that has gone into me. Oh, definitely. I think yeah. I think you've evolved into this. I mean, you've always been in a, an incredible ambassador. You've always been approachable with the media. Um, but for me, the biggest thing is, as we've watched you evolve into this apex predator, because you, mm. you certainly are an apex predator, top five consistently in the world. You're a boss. That's boss <laughs> level. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's always intriguing for me how you deal with those downs do you sort of go into your shell are you within your sort of circle because i know you don't run in a big circle you've got no. a very tight circle uh, it's all about trust um do you sort of just retract into that circle and sort of immerse yourself there or tell us how do you deal with because it hasn't been the easiest of years yeah it's been a lot of and we will get to that just now but it hasn't been the easiest of years for you yeah um I have a very small circle, even smaller now, you know, and um, I think it works. And for me, like on the downtime, I need to be able to go within myself and go within that circle because mm -hmm. that's where I can connect with myself. And that's the part of myself that needs to be treated before I can go back to track to being that apex predator. Because if I don't feel like myself, then I can't be that apex predator, as you put it, you know, and it's it's, it's important to get that healing, you know, get that rest, mm -hmm. get that recovery, you know, get, just get away from the glitz and the glamour and, you know, the training and, you know, the intensity and the travel and, you know, just the athlete life, yeah. just go home and be me. You know, once I can do that and do that, I can come back stronger. So that's where I go to all the time, you know, and I also, you know, very, very, I'm a very active speaker of going to the psychologist and speaking to someone because that also helps as yeah. well, you know, that, that processing stuff. Yeah. Right? Pro being able to process things, go through things and just, just, just have the mental, the mental side of you treated as much as you can treat it at home. It's nice to have like a third party that's mm -hmm. not emotionally invested in you to, you know, to speak to, you know, and, 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 and I have that person and it's been really great and it's been, it's been, a good, like a d good decision for me to, to to take upon, you know, and yeah, um, that's it's 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 a good thing for us. You always strike me as someone who's quietly confident. Like I know Wade for Nika got Quiet Storm. I think he's trademarked hashtag Quiet mm -hmm. Storm. But uh, you strike me as someone who's quietly confident, and you know 
what you're capable of. Yeah. Um, but I think that you've touched on the whole sports psychologist or the psychologist sort of side where you're processing because you and Coach Vanna go a long way back. You mm -hmm. trust him implicitly. You've got peer to manages you. He's been fantastic. But I think it's important to to be able to go to someone else and just channel that sort of concern. Maybe there's a self-doubt at times or maybe you're not just feeding yourself or maybe it's I'm not sleeping at night, whatever it may be. Yeah. I think it's important that you, you process that. Yeah, it's very important, you know, um, like for what we do with sport, you know, it's 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 ten percent physical, ninety percent mental. If the the mental work is not done, you can do all the training you want. You can be the best trainer there, but then once you get onto the line and the mental game is not ready, it all goes to waste. You know. Yeah. So for for me, it's, it's it's very important to just work on the head, work on your headspace, and then and just go through the process that you need to go through. You know, if you need to break down things that 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 have been that uh, that you built walls around you know yeah. you need to break those down and the third party would help that you yeah. know i found that 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 having that third party like for me helps and it also prepares me to get ready to race and gets me into the mindset you know like what i need to do to get into that mind mindset to be that apex predator mm -hmm. when i step onto the track you know and i'm a very I am, as you put it, like I am quietly confident yeah, yeah. because I know a bit what of I can do. There has to be swagger <laughs> at 100 meters. I yeah. mean, you guys are the heavyweights yeah, of yeah, athletics. Yeah, yeah, we are the heavyweights. I know everybody like stops for that 10 seconds, 9 seconds just to see who's the fastest man in the world. And, like, you know, we have, like, these chats on the circuit. Like, um, I was talking to Johan the ones this year, and I was like, dude, everyone at tw in 2012 Olympics, literally from all sports, basketball he says lebron james and them were there they literally ran to this track to watch the 100 meter final and i think the world the whole world just stops for that 100 meter final and that's where we're at so for me if i'm not a confident athlete or if i'm not a confident sprinter i'm not going to make it on that stage yeah so i have to be confident i have to be believe in what i am and what i can do and believe that I can be best and believe that I can win and I can be and actually deserve to be here. Yeah. You know, if you don't believe that, then you won't do anything in the game, you know, and, 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 and you have to have a strong head and be able to back yourself because the guys out on the circuit, people will find them intimidating. Mm. And for me, I remember when I was just starting, it was seeing all these names. Are you saying Bolt? I mean, the greatest yeah, of all time. Like, Usain and just seeing how big he is and then seeing Johan and how buff he was and, you know, getting on the track with um, Gatlin and Gay and Gatlin is super intimidating and Tyson Gay is just like quiet, but he's just also intimidating and just like these are people I watch on TV yeah. and now I'm lining up against them. And for me in 2012, that's when I said I wanted to, to do this thing, you know, and I didn't know it was going to happen so quickly that I in two years time that I'll be like lining up against these guys and it's been amazing that's it's, cool yeah that's a cool story um Tyler my producer if I can just pull up uh Tokyo 2021 well 2020 isn't it that was officially but it happened in 21 mm -hmm. uh on YouTube let's have a look here because if we can just roll that back to the start of the race just 30 odd seconds here Akani before, yeah, there we go. What are you thinking here, man? I could play this whole race to you. Um, <laughs> at that point, like in the beginning of the race, I think when the gun went off, right, um, I know I didn't have a good start. Like I had a good reaction, but then I lost power in my third step. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been struggling with, you know, and, and I lost power in my third step and that lost my race, you know, that lost my momentum into the race. And... Um, yeah, um, just was like, okay, now I just have to go, I have to run. Yeah. You know, I have to run and finished. What did I finish? Like fifth or fourth? Yeah, or but I mean, Jacobs was on another level. Yeah. I think the stars aligned for him there. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, like, I think that day, that moment, that time, it was just made for him, mm. you know, and, and, and I won't take anything away from him. He's, 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 he's a great, a great sprinter, a great athlete, and um, he showed up. Yeah. Mm. So would you say in the 100 meters, sometimes it is a case of the stars aligning because mm -hmm. you did run the 984. I mean, there was a 982, but the wind didn't help. Mm. That was just, did everything just click on the day, man? Did you feel good? Was Did you have breakfast, a good breakfast? You know what I mean? Your favorite jam. 
I have no. I it was just like a normal day. I remember we trained the day before. Mm. We had like a whole acceleration, like full acceleration session, and then I had a little bit of germ. Then went went to sleep. Woke up the next day. And then um, it was just a hot day, and I was like, okay, I feel good. Let me just see what 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 the body has. And at that point, it's like March. Yeah. So March is still in like the last part of preseason mm-hmm. in a sense, but it's still the body's still still loaded, you know, and it's still a bit heavy. And I just ran and 982 on the clock and I was like, yo, okay, this is where we're at now. It's going to be a good season. Nice. You know? and, and I think that's something that we've learned with this season. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of the season, Tyler, if we can get uh, world champs, please. Oregon, that's a great place though. Hey? I mean, it's a beautiful mm. place. Great setup. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Americans though were on another level that day. Home ground advantage. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Tell, tell us before we roll this, Tyler. Just hold on one second. Uh, here we are. We're having a look at at how you in the blocks. Are you thinking about anything there, or are you thinking about my start? Are you thinking about strides? Because I just see those Adidas. The I mean, there's quite a few there. They're just like sticking out. Um, what um, are you thinking there? What's going through your mind? At that point, you shouldn't be thinking, but I was thinking. Oh, really? Yeah. That's that. that was oh, so that you've got to block out the noise. Yeah, you've got to block out the noise. You've just got to be in a point where you actually just have to react. Because if you think that's time wasted and you think your mind is not focused on reacting, it's mm. focusing on whatever you're thinking about. So at that point, I was thinking, I was just, I remember I said to myself, like, just react, just react, just react. And me telling myself that, was me taking my, my, my attention away from the starter, mm. which shouldn't happen, you know. That slight delay. Mm. Um, Tyler, let's roll that, please. Let's have a look. Because the lane's good. Yeah, I had a great lane. And then Fred, Fred was just in the shape of his life, you know. I mean, unreal. Mm. I mean, that, that's phenomenal to watch. I mean, the whole world watched this. I know it was early hours of South African time, but that is so close, man. It was super close, you know. Fred Fred had an amazing season, yeah. So this year, he just had a crazy No, he's season. been on fire. Mm. Do you get on with most of the guys on the track? Because, yeah. like you say, you have to have the swagger. You have to sort of be the guy. But everyone tends to get on. Um, I've seen you've gone out to Jamaica, right, to hang mm-hmm. out with Usain and Johan and those guys. But is the general scene okay? Does everyone kind of get on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all get along with each other. No one has any beef or anything mm-hmm. with each other. We all just go greet each other, you know. But then when it's day of the race, everybody switches. Like, everybody's different. <laughs> like, no one wants to look at each other. People, you'll greet someone, they won't greet you. And it's just like, yo, okay, bro, like, when you're gonna race in the evening, relax. <laughs> but I think that's how people get into their 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 their, their, their racing the zone, I their suppose. Zone, yeah. yeah, for the race because you have to get into a zone. Do you have a ritual beforehand? Do you have a song? Uh, <laughs> do you have the headphones on beforehand in the in the warm up area? So for me, it, it it depends on how I feel on that day. Sometimes I play music. Sometimes I won't play music. And I've seen it work on both ways. You know, um, it's just I just need to make sure that I feel good. If I do strides, like when I do my first run, run, run throughs and my strides and go through my warm up, I need to feel like actually my body is awake, my body is actually reacting, yeah. it's responsive, and my mind is also responsive and it's ready to go. So that's that's literally it. I just have to feel like I'm ready to go, and if I'm ready to go, then we go fight. Uh, I like that. I like that. I, I think for me, it's always interesting. Like. Um, a lot of athletes, like you say, either have the tunes on or they don't. So mm. Some like it loud. I mean, what is your go-to track? Are you allowed to say that? <laughs> um, Do you have something that gets that the fire in the belly going? Nah, I actually just have like a genres. I have um, hip hop. Okay. My go-to is hip hop, and then once I like, I'm once I'm inside of it and I feel like I'm in my zone, then I'll choose like go to like South African. I'm a piano. Listen to that. Because that also gets me like yeah, yeah. hyped up, and then, then you get to a point where you get to have to go into the blocks. Well, we have to do like block warm ups, and I have to take them off. So now I don't even think about the music I was listening to. I'm just in a zone now. Yeah. Like I'm just in that zone of having to react and having to just get out the blocks and making sure everything is flowing 100 percent. Do you hear the crowd? Do you no. notice them? I was gonna say no. It's <laughs> not. Hey, nah. Everybody asks me, do you hear the crowd? And I'm just like, no. Like. 
I literally don't hear a thing. I can hear the steps. Yeah. I can hear my footsteps, my running steps and the people next to me, but I can't hear the crowd. I only hear the crowd at the end when once you cross the line, mm. then you're like, yeah, you're like, okay. But most of the time when you're in the race, you don't hear the crowd. You don't, it's like silent. It's very, that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. Um, Commonwealth Games uh, is another one I'd like to look at, Tyler, if we can. There is a rivalry brewing, <laughs> and I know you like at the end of the day, you can't ignore it. Mm. You and our Kenyan beast, I suppose, Amanyala, mm-hmm. this looks intense, man. Like Between the two of you, especially going into Commonwealth Games, I think almost everyone wanted to see the two of you and how you would react to him. Mm. Is that a fair assumption? Um, yeah, I think... Um Everybody just wanted to see like how I would match up if someone from Africa had would step up, you know. And they forget that there's been a couple of guys that have been like on the circuit. I can go back to Cisse. Um, um, there was another guy from Cote d'Ivoire. I forgot his name. Um, um, he also ran in 2016, 2016. I think he ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, I see his face. I just forgot his name now. But that was a rivalry then. Then it was Cisse, you know, and um, then it now Ferdinand, you yeah. know, and Ferdinand is just, he just had a really great year this year, you know, super great year. Um, came out, ran a 977, you know, and, 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 and for, for, for me, it was like a, an African record gone <laughs> <laughs> and just got it. But um, but you'll get it back. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's something for me. Like, I know I can get it back. Yeah. I know I can run 97. Yeah. Like. It's not like it's not even a thing. It's just on the day when everything just comes together. You know, for me, it's it's, it's making sure that everything comes together right. And yeah, I believe nine seven that w- that African record's gonna go. But it is good for athletics in Africa. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This rivalry, two Africans, mm-hmm. men of the soil, going head to head at the Commonwealth Games, going at whatever meet it might be. Mm. Let's have a look here. Just just run us through this one, Akani. Um, I, look, I really appreciate it. It's not often we can get the insights from someone who was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here, it was also trying to get out as best as I can, and I didn't get that great start. And Ferdinand just got that step ahead, and he was gone. He was gone, you know, and, 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 and. He just ran. He just had a really great season this year, man. He just really has a great season, but um, he's, 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 he's... He's stocky, man. He's a big guy. It says on your wiki that you're stocky mm. on your website. Stocky but short. And I'm like, no. who wrote this stuff, man? <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen you as stocky. I've seen you when no. you've maybe been bulked. Yeah. And but that's you've like, never been stocky. He's, he's stocky. But he comes from rugby. He comes, he's a player. That's right, you know? yeah. And um, um, he's, he's I think he's like eighty something, eighty something kilos. Yeah, you know. And for me, it's 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 for me it's I think I go if I go heavy I go seventy eight kilos. I was gonna say not more than that. I've I touched on eighty this year. Yeah, and but that was just like for like two days. Yeah, and then I went down back to seventy eight, and then after that you start like maintaining seventy eight, seventy seven. But I know like my proper race weight. 76 okay then i'm um, comfortable very comfortable body's light body's moving flowing and yeah. everything you know. um the the season ended off on a high though i mean when you went to stockholm um it maybe wasn't the the sort of sub 10 you were looking for mm. but the 10 2 finishing off with a w that's you know it's been it's been an okay year if i can put it that way i think um this year to be all honest you know um this year was like one of my worst years Okay. Like, it was a good year. You know, I yeah. still finished fifth in the world, yeah. you know, and, and, and still I kind of maintained my that spot. But it's like, it was a bad year for me. and um, Because um, of the African record? Because of the African record. Well, not Mauritius, I not mean. Not African record per se, you know. It was more of like performance-wise, you know. No, usually I'd be able to run more than seven sub-10. Most mm. of my races would be under 10, you know. I will be... I'd have my start in check this year my start was not in check okay you know and my top end was fine but my start it wasn't fine you know and um i just wasn't having a very fluent year you know i got injured 
to the last like the end part of the year mm. had to sort that out and yeah it was just having to 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 deal with a lot of challenges you know and um i got through it got through the year you know finished fifth in the world but to me and coach one of my bad seasons okay yeah most people cut their arms off with silver at Commonwealth <laughs> Games, you know, final at World Champs Olympics. But anyway, but that's the standards you set. Though. Yes, that's the standards I set. You know, I said, you know, for me, it's 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 always a thing of, I want to be the best in the world. Mm-hmm. I want to win. You know, when I step against the Americans, the Jamaicans, the whoever's, you know, I want to win. And I believe I can win. It's not a thing of not believing that I can win. I know I can win, you know, and I know I can beat these guys. And I know me on my best race, very difficult to beat. Yeah. So it's just being able to get my best race and replicate it each and every time I race. So when you signed off here in this race, were you like just relieved to sort of see the end of the season? Or was it kind of <laughs> like, you, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I, I, it's it's a privilege to do what you do for a living, mm. right? We understand that you've got a God-given talent. But yeah. at the same time, like maybe that holiday was beckoning yeah i think i think i think it was it was it was time you know just to like just say okay i'm done like i'm literally done with the season i need to end off the season i need to just go rest you know put myself together and then you know go away for a bit and then just make sure when i come back i come back with the right mindset i come back with goal sets i come back Mm with that hungry athlete that wants to race that wants to compete because after last year's disappointment at Olympics, I didn't want to race anymore. Yeah. You know, for me, it was a thing of, do I want to do this thing again? Wow. And it was that deep? Yeah. And, and like, I was a thing of, like, I fell into depression. And, you know, that's when I st- took an, a bigger step into psychology. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and that's just one thing that I had to just deal with and just come over. Because a lot of people don't know that, you know. A lot of people don't know that, like, how big of a thing this is for us Mm. you know for me you know at olympics it not going the way i I wanted it to go like broke me down like broke the human in me yeah you know and the athletes in me and like the self-belief so i had to go back and rebuild and this year was just about rebuilding me not rebuilding the athlete but rebuilding me and once i could rebuild me i can go on and face the world go on and just be able to be confident enough to step on the track and be hungry for athletics again because that's 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 what i want you know just being able to be hungry for athletics being able to hungry to to compete and that was a bit off this year Mm. but now i'm the fire is burning yeah 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 Yeah, the fire is burning you know and 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 then there's like it's like unfinished business you know and just back to that agani that 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 is hungry to learn Mm. more in track because I'm still very young in track, but also hungry to be on top and to go out there and win and be a world champion, be an Olympic champion, you know, be African record holder, get as close as I can to the world record, you know, and be one of the best sprinters ever in the history of 100 meters. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I think your name is carved into the history books in South Africa, no doubt. Africa also, I think you were up there. But uh, I think an Olympic medal is probably... Mm the box you need to tick yeah and it's not i it's not a justification thing because you, you we know top five it's like millimeters it's milliseconds yeah but it's like but it's not the step it's like it's like um it's you're there but you're not there yeah you know and i think the worst one was finishing fourth at worlds in 2019 and i was like I was there like I'm literally the first loser (laughs) like out of everything I'm the first loser like I'm 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 leaving with that nothing yeah you know and there's three guys in front of me that are taking something home you know and 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 it's hard but you have to just go out there now when I start training now it's different it's Mm. you know it's 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 the hungry young Akani but Mm with the mature sprinter's head in. I got you. Yeah. So when when are you back f- officially training and, and when does the season officially start for you? 24th. Okay. 24th of October. So I have 22 days left. 
So what are you planning to do? I yes, mean, man. I know you're a gay man. Thanks. I'm still waiting for my uh, invite, my friend invite on uh, PlayStation. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Um, but I mean, obviously family right now and rest. That's yeah. the main focus. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a lot of rest, you know, because I am tired. Like I still feel like really tired and everything. Um, but it's rest, 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 rest. Um, also back sports, you know, work on back sports, mm -hmm. get that, get that. How's know, that going, going by the way? It's going really good. Um, we, we growing very well, like past our expectations of the year, you nice. know, and it's been a great 10 months. Well, this year, the last 10 months have been a really amazing and we've, we've been pushing. So that's, that's also a thing that I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about, you know, just getting that hundred percent, which is very close to, and yeah, just, just. The week before I start, I know I'm just gonna go into like just a little bit of a closed space just to just get my mental and just start like and just put my 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 goals down and then we start off and then yeah. Not to give you um, that sick feeling in your stomach like I, I used to get before I had to go back to boarding school on a on a Sunday night. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, I gotta go back. Um, but the preseason's tough. True, <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> I mean, I don't think a lot of people. Because like you said, I mean, you've got LeBron James, you've got all these people stopping to watch the 100-meter final of the Olympic Games mm -hmm. every four years. People don't realize the work that goes into those that Olympic cycle. From the preseason to where you're loading to everything, it's not pretty. Yeah, because it's, it's literally eight months of grueling training. Eight months, let me even say nine. Mm. Nine months of tough training for, let's say two months of racing and in that two months of racing you have to be the best that you can be and if you're not the best you can be in those two months you can call it off you know and 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 and, and people don't understand like the first three months oh, first six weeks actually are the most it's the worst it's the worst time <laughs> of your life <laughs> literally the worst time of your life because you 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 your body goes through so many pains like you feel like your bones are being beaten up and your muscles are just trying to come out of your skin. You feel like you want to just throw up every session. You get thoughts of, like, do I, do I want to do this again? <laughs> like, I don't want to do this anymore. This thing is so tough. I could be I could be just relaxing at home. Then you start thinking, I'm going to be relaxing at home, but what else am I going to be doing? Yeah. You know, I love this thing. And you just come back the next day. Do it again. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, and coach also t said to us this year, he said, oh, you guys are going, you guys must know that it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. So I have to prepare for that. And I don't even know what he means by tough because every year is tough. So now it's like, which tough is this one now? <laughs> so it's just, just, just getting the head into that. And yeah, I'm ready for whatever he throws at me. I noticed you guys train on grass quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, what's the theory behind that? Is it, is it, I mean, out where you train, I'm not going to tell everyone where you train, but out where you train is pretty private. It's yeah. uh, location-wise pretty good to where you stay. Mm. Um, but what's what's with the grass? I mean, I would have imagined you would be on track most of the time, or nah. what's the deal? I think um, with coach, coach likes the grass because um, with the grass, we it's it's you can ever you can take a lot of load with grass. With okay. the track, you 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 you're like touching on the point of just trying to get injured and all these things. So the grass is also soft. It takes a lot of the, the punch that you give the ground and you actually have to work harder on the grass because the grass is not giving you any feedback. It's yeah. just stepping onto the grass, stepping on the grass and not bouncing you back. So for coach, it's, 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 it works. Yeah. It keeps us injury free. And when we do the switch from grass to track, then you're faster. Mm. You know, you know how to, place and much how much how much power you need to place into the ground so that you're pushed forward you know and it's it's it's, it's a nicer feeling you know when you get there you're just like oh this is actually easy you know you're going faster you know you're going faster and once you go and then you coach up like okay let's go back to the grass and we do some work on the grass and you're just like okay that's fine you know it's that actually, base is yeah. there and you're good to go mm. okay well thanks for clarifying and thanks <laughs> coach vanna for for clarifying um you touched on injuries. You've been quite lucky, though. You did yeah. have the the niggle uh, earlier this year, mm -hmm. but generally you've been okay with injuries. Whereas you see, there's athletes that tend to be very unlucky. They just pick yeah. up things. I mean, Wade, like he's been through a miserable journey, but it seems like he's finally starting to to find a bit of rhythm, uh, settling into his base in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, but from a mental point of view, 
to get over an injury, especially if it's a catastrophic one or mm-hmm. if, even if it's a niggle, do you sort of have to go find that sort of dark place and try and get yourself out of it? Uh, yeah, you do. But at the same time, it's like, I, I let, me, let's, let, me, let me, so I've had two big injuries in mm-hmm. the last five years, since 2016, right? 2016, before Olympics, when I tore my hamstring at nationals yeah. in Stellenbosch, and then I thought the Olympics was done for me. Worked, came back, was fine. But at that point, you're really thinking, maybe I'm not going to go to Olympics. Maybe I'm not going to make it to Olympics. Then you need to switch your mind and be like, okay, I need to start feeding my body good energy. You know, saying, okay, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be, let me work. Let me get back to work. Trust the people around you that are trying to get you back. Cool. Then this year, same thing. Got injured. Then it's like, okay, um, I need to just get right. You know, and, and, and you start thinking like, maybe my body is just not the way it used to be. I'm, a, I'm older now, you know, and maybe the body's not going to recover as fast as it used to recover. And fortunately enough, it did, you know, but it does take your step back and you have to rebuild a little bit just so that you can get that base in and go again. So it's, 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 it's a mental game. Like I was saying, it's like 90% is your head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, athletics is, is one part of your life. Mm-hmm. Family's the other thing. I'm going to ask you, what do you think of South Africa at the moment? Because there's a lot of negativity. I know <laughs> I know, we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> for the, but you out there representing us on the global circuit, right? Mm-hmm. You're competing all over the world. Um, what's the general vibe that you get from people saying about South Africa? Do they, Is it still the, the cliché, there's elephants and giraffes yeah. running around? or Because... <laughs> Surely stuff like load shedding now, they've heard of. So, um, some uh, say, some countries, some people, I'm not going to mention which yeah. countries, you know. <laughs> They're West, though. Yeah, 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 very West. <laughs> and they'll be like, do you guys have elephants? Do you guys have, like, pet lions? And I entertain it. I, I'm like, yeah, I have a pet lion, I have a pet tiger, you know, pet child, <laughs> you know, tiger in South Africa. And they believe all that stuff. And I'm like, they roam around the streets. And like, you guys have roads. I'm like, yeah, we have roads and buildings. And they just roam around. They, monkeys come into <laughs> the buildings. We chill with them and whatnot. And they actually believe that. And I'm just like, guys, you don't have Google. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have Google. Like, you can actually Google what South Africa exactly. actually looks like. Yeah. And educate yourself, you know. But, you know, now um, I had a meeting with, because I'm still, I'm still on the Athletes Commission. And, um, we had a meeting last week and I had, we, we had load shedding and while I was talking, it went off. And fortunately enough, like I have, um, like a backup system at home. Sure, sure. So it kicked back and then it went off, went on. And then I had to explain cause I was talking like, what happened? And I was like, no, it was just load shedding. And they're like, what's load shedding? We don't understand what load shedding is. Like they just switch off our electricity here in South Africa. And, um, I don't know why, you know, but that's what they do. So everybody's just everybody's just trying to understand what happens in South Africa, and I just tell them like, for me, because I've traveled like across the world, you know, and I say South Africa is the best country. Take away the corruption and the negative stuff. If you look at the world and look how South Africa is and how we live, best country in the world. Just make sure there's jobs, corruption out of it. Best country, best weather, best country. And people also are really great. I agree with you uh, on a number of levels. Um, but as a professional athlete, do you hear that noise that's out there? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you pay attention to it? Do you try and switch off the radio in the morning or when you drive into training and just focus on your, I'm a piano? Or yeah. Um, yo, when, 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 like, I also don't listen to the radio much. Okay. I don't look at the news much. Um, like, I try to avoid those kind of things because... Like sometimes they'll, they'll 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 talk and you know they'll mention me and yeah. they'll mention me in a bad light and it's like so, so like let's say a perfect example now with Commonwealth Games, um, it was the title the 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 the, the subjects of the, the the articles was in a negative light like I lost I disappointed the country and all these things and I'm like dude I want a medal and you you're still saying I disappointed the country which is like blows my mind because I know the country wants more and everybody wants, you know, because I've set that standard, you know, and they're used to that. But there's still something that's coming back home 
you know and you they don't see that they don't appreciate that but then you have to just be able to be at a point where just cut everything out cut mm. out the noise and do what you need to do like now i'm even i think i'm worse now to a point where i i really don't care like what they have to say yeah because at the end of the day i am the one that grunts yeah i'm the one that puts in the hours i am the one that sacrifices my life and everything every part of my life so i can be the athlete when i step on the line yes i'll represent the country but i represent myself my coach the team that that helped me get here and everybody that's helped me get here because at the end of the day those people know my journey those people know the struggles those people know what i got through just to be here and it's not easy and you're accountable to yourself and your family and that's it and to coach vanna that's yeah. at the end of the day you're not accountable to a clickbait journalist that's out there and yeah. unfortunately that's what we're seeing a lot of the time and uh, it is a bit of a concern but i think the faster you move into that space where you can block out the noise and focus on what matters the better for you as a, as a human being, just mm. a positive energy sort of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's easy to go spiral down and be worried about all these things and that sort of thing. Um, I've got a few more I just want to ask you. Yeah. You obviously spend a bit of time in Italy. How's yeah. uh, mm. how's the Italian coming along? No, good, bene. Okay, so you... Molto bene. Okay, so you've settled in quite nicely. Because <laughs> I, I know you guys go off there, especially for the European season, you base yourselves in Italy. Yeah. Um, is it minus 20? What is it? Minus yeah, it's a minus 20. It's, it's like a minus a, 20, yeah? It's, it's like a, <laughs> the end of season yeah. drink. Oh, that's the end of season drink. It's, it's, it's something that we always make sure we get. <laughs> it's like a, a, a Jägermeister. I okay. It's like Jägermeister, but this is different. But you have to keep it at like um, minus 20 degrees. Is it like in a freezer something? Yeah, it's thing. its own freezer. Yeah. And we just call it minus 20 because they have to keep it in a... Yeah, I don't, can't remember center. the name. Anymore. But it's like Amaro Dal Capo. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> and you just like have shots of that thing. It's nice. Very nice. Yeah, you yeah. Know, this is, that one is a chilly one, which is really good. So the, for us, it's, it's, it's the end of the season with that. And yeah. That's the way to go. Yeah. So let's talk about, as we wrap up, um, what's next for Akani Sambino. Paris is not far away. Mm -hmm. I, I know 2024. We still got to get through 23. There's World Champs still. I think it's Budapest. Is yeah. It? Budapest. Um, what's next for you? I know you've said... You want to bring that apex predator back to the mm. mix. You want to, you've almost got a point to prove, you know, mm -hmm. in a way to yourself, not to anyone else. Mm. What's next for you? Um, first, I have to put, I have a point to prove okay. to myself, to the athletics world. Um, second, um, you know, just get ready for Budapest, um, world champs next year. We are, you know, geared in for that. You know, Budapest is, happens to be the country that I have been breaking the African records there and SA records Happy there. Hunting so, ground. so that's like it's like me going home in a way, you know, me going home to where I'm used to running fast, you know. So I'm um, looking forward to that. And just having a healthy season next year, you know, a healthy physical season, a healthy mental season and and, 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 and just building it up to to worlds and, and doing the best I can there. You know, better than this year. Way better than this year. And then twenty four Paris which is a must. There's no way I'm missing Paris. You know, it's, 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 it's Olympics in Paris. It's the Olympic Games. Yeah. It's 100 meters. It's the biggest show on earth. It's the biggest show on earth. 100 meters is yeah. the biggest show at the Olympics. Yeah. So I want to finish on top there. I'm going to be cheeky and ask you 2028. 20, <laughs> <laughs> I will be there. Los Angeles, I will be there. That's definitely like, I'm still young. I guess I'm, I'm still in my 20s, you know, yeah. so I'm still young. It just feels like I've been running for forever because I started off just straight out of high school. It's been a decade. Mm. and o Over a decade. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I came into the sport not knowing anything about it to being one of the best at this event. So for me, it's, 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 it's like a good decade, but let's make the next one even better. Can we say the best is yet to come? Definitely. Best is yet to come. You know, they say sprinters, you know, the old age sprinters used to peak in their 30s, you know, and that's where I, I'm going to be peaking again, you know, and, and, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to, you know, taking the world on again as that apex predator, you know, taking the world on and 
knowing having them know they already know now if I step onto track I'm I'm yet to race you know but now it's going to be even like worse for them well Kani thanks for your time I look forward to celebrating with a minus 20 yes, or two so. with you sometime <laughs> uh, thanks for your time thanks for for coming on the show and uh, like and subscribe and uh, yeah we'll bring you more episodes as we go along but uh, it's been an honor and a privilege and I'm sure we've got a lot more stories and we'll have you on the show I would say in the near future yeah definitely um, thanks for having me and Thank you for letting me be the first. Please add me as a friend on PlayStation. Dude, send your, your ID. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> Kani, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah.